So we ended the last video with a couple shortcut formulas. Um, the other thing that's important to remember when you need to compute some of these sums of squares is that they all add up to one another. So um, if you have your SSG um, and you add your SSE, that'll turn out to be your SST. So these are the examples from the music and pain relief example. So the SSG was 26.9, and if you do 26.9 plus 79.6, you're going to get the SST, which is 109.2. And so if you were in a scenario where you needed to compute um, some of these sums of squares, you could make it easier on yourself by just computing two of them and then doing the addition or subtraction to find the third one. Um, and one of the things that makes ANOVA a little bit more complicated than the other types of inference that we've been doing is um, it takes a while to find the test statistic. And we have this thing called an ANOVA table. And an ANOVA table is just a way to summarize a bunch of the information that we need to know um, in order to do inference. Um, and so it has these different columns, which I'm going to go over. So the first column is the source, and that is where is the variability coming from? Is it coming from the groups? Is it coming from the error? Or is it the total variability? And the next column is the degrees of freedom. We've talked about degrees of freedom before in the different sections where we were using a T distribution. We used N minus one when we were doing inference about one mean. We used the minimum of N one minus one and N two minus one when we were doing inference for two means. And when we were doing inference for regression, we used N minus two. So just like everything is getting more complicated with ANOVA, the degrees of freedom get more complicated with ANOVA. So the degrees of freedom for the groups are going to be k minus 1. That's the number of groups minus 1. The uh, total degrees of freedom are going to be n minus 1. And then because everything in the ANOVA table needs to add up, then the degrees of freedom for the error are going to be n minus k. Then uh, we've got the column, which is the sums of squares. And so we've got the sum of squares for the groups, SSG, the sum of squares for the error, SSE and the sum of squares for the total, which is SST. And I haven't put in the equations, right? You've got these equations that you can that you can do, but I haven't summarized them there. And then the last column that we're going to talk about for right now is the mean square. So we've got fewer rows in this portion. We've got the MSG, the mean squares for the groups, and that's going to be the SSG divided by the degrees of freedom for the groups. So it's going to be this SSG divided by this k minus 1, and that will end up being our mean squares for the groups. And then we have our mean squared error, and that's going to be the sums of squares for the groups minus the degrees of freedom for the groups, and that's the n minus k. We don't end up putting something in this third box. That just gets left empty. So we don't do a mean square for the total. So this is the beginning of the ANOVA table. So let's think about how this would look for that music and pain relief data. And if you want, you could pause the video for a second and try and do uh, some of the filling out on your own before I go on and do it myself. All right. I'm going to do it. So for our degrees of freedom for the groups, we've got our number of groups, which is 3 minus 1. So that's going to be 2. Then when we're talking about n, we mean n, the overall sample size, which is 30. And so it's going to be 30 minus 3 is 27 for the degrees of freedom for the error. And then for the total, we're going to have 30 minus 1 is 29. And we can just check our work. We want to make sure that 2 plus 27 equals 29. Yep, so I think we've done that correctly. That's good. And then the other pieces that we need to figure out are the sum of squares for the groups and the sum of squares for uh, either the error or the total. Like I said, I only ever compute two of them based on the formula, and then I'll just do subtraction for the third piece. So let's start with SSG. And that's the sum of n sub i of x bar i minus x bar squared. And because we have three groups, it's going to be three things that get added together. It's going to be n1 x bar 1 minus x bar squared plus n2 x bar 2 minus x bar squared plus n3 
x bar 3 minus x bar squared. And we just have to think about what all of these different numbers are. So one thing that we need are the, uh, the x bar sub i's. So I'm going to just substitute in here. Um, I'm going to substitute the 5. And then for x bar 2, I'm going to substitute 4.8. And for x bar sub 3, I'm going to substitute 7. And then let's do the n sub i's as well. So n1 is 10, and n2 is also 10, and n3 is 10. So our sample sizes are the same in this example. They won't always be, but in this example, they are. Um, and then the last thing that we need is the overall x bar, which I think I forgot to tell you. That would be given to you. You wouldn't have to compute that. The overall x bar is 5.6. And so then we would just substitute that in everywhere that we've got x bar. So this is going to be 5.6. And this is going to be 5.6. And this is going to be 5.6. And then we just need to crank through all the arithmetic. All right, so we've got this 10 times 0.36 plus 10 times 0.64 plus 10 times 1.96. And that's the SSG. So let's just add those things all up to get the total. And that's the 29.6. That number might sound familiar. I think I actually told you what the SSG and SSE and SST were earlier. So we've just confirmed that number. That looks right. So now uh, we could use a shortcut formula either for SSE or SST. The shortest one is for the SST. That's the n minus 1 times the overall standard deviation squared but I actually haven't given you the overall standard deviation. So we could use the shortcut formula for the SSE to do that one. So I'm going to just make myself some room here. So the shortcut formula for the SSE is it's the sum of NI minus 1 times SI squared. And in this case, that's going to be N1 minus 1 times S1 squared plus n2 minus 1 times s2 squared plus n3 minus 1 times s3 squared. And again, I can just go through and substitute some of these numbers. So all of our n's are actually 10 in this case. Again, the sample size isn't always the same, but in this case it is. And then I can substitute in the standard deviations. So for the first group, it's 1.83 squared, and then 1.23 squared, and uh, 2 squared. And then we just need to crank through the arithmetic again. And I think that comes out to be 76.5, something like that. I'll put the, um, the squiggly equals because this is an approximation, 76.5. And I think, again, I had given you these numbers before, so that's probably not exactly the one that I gave you, but it's going to be pretty similar. And then the last thing that I can do is I can just say I know that the SSG plus the SSE is equal to the SST. And so I can just add together 29.6 plus 76.5, and that's going to be my approximate SST. That's the 106.1. All right, let's just flip back and see how close we were to the originals, because um, I think I had given you these numbers. So we got the SSG exactly, because we weren't using an approximating formula there. The SSE, we were pretty close, and also for the SST. So those approximating formulas do pretty well. So, um, so now we've got these pieces. I'm just going to highlight them so they're a little bit easier to see. And I'll highlight the final answers uh, in the degrees of freedom as well. So now we can find our mean squares. So we can do 29.6 divided by 2 for the mean squares for the groups. And that's 14.8. And then we can do 76.5 divided by 27. And that's 2.83 repeating. I'll just highlight those as well so that they stand out. So that's the beginning of the ANOVA table for the music and the pain relief data. We're getting closer to a test statistic, but we're still not quite there. 
we still have a bunch of numbers. We need a single number to do a hypothesis test. And what we're going to use is called the F statistic. And the F statistic is the ratio of the variability between the groups to the variability within the groups. So it's going to be the MSG over the MSE. And if we have a really big F value, it would be very strange to observe if the null hypothesis were true. And in the case of ANOVA, our null hypothesis is always that all the means are equal. So um, the larger the F value, the stranger it is. Just like the larger the Z score or the larger the T value, the stranger it is, the larger the F value, the stranger it is. So there's one more column in the ANOVA table, that's the F statistic, and that's where you do MSG divided by MSE. If we were going to do that with our, our data, I think I'm using the exact sums of squares here, but I could do 14.8 divided by 2.948, and that would come out to be 5.02, and that's my F statistic. I think I'm going to leave this video here for right now.